Welcome to When Gen X Ruled the Multiplex, the films that shaped the MTV generation. Today's film is the vicious black comedy Heathers, which was released in theaters in 1989 and which effectively killed the entire genre of 1980s teen comedies. Heathers was directed by Michael Lehman in his feature debut. He'd go on to direct many other films, including Hudson Hawk, Airheads, and The Truth About Cats and Dogs. It was written by Daniel Waters in his feature film debut. He'd go on to write the screenplays for The Adventures of Ford Fairlane, Demolition Man, and Batman Returns. Both Waters and Lehman have turned out some interesting work post-Heathers, but Heathers, which was a box office flop but has gone on to be regarded as one of the most influential and best teen films of the 80s remains their triumph. As a cover of the 1956 standard Que Sera Sera plays, we open in Sherwood, Ohio, where a trio of teen girls play croquet. Each girl is named Heather, and they are the most popular students at their high school. Heather Chandler, who always dresses in red to signify both power and anger, is the vicious and spiteful leader. She's played by Kim Walker, who'd go on to star in a short-lived 1990 Fox TV series based on S.E. Hinton's classic novel The Outsiders. Walker died much too young of a brain tumor in 2001. Heather Duke, who always dresses in green for Envy, is played by future 90210 and Charmed star Shannon Doherty, then known for appearing in the later seasons of Little House on the Prairie and the NBC series Our House. Heather McNamara, who wears yellow for cowardice, is played by Lisanne Falk, a successful teen model who appeared on Foreigner's album cover for Head Games in 1979. Heather Chandler's croquet ball beans a teen girl buried up to her neck in the lawn on the head, and this is her first indication that Heather's is not afraid to swerve into the surreal. The teen girl is Veronica Sawyer, a Heather in all but name, and she's played by Winona Ryder, then known for giving solid supporting performances in 80s classics such as Beetlejuice and Lucas. Veronica always dresses in black and blue because she's darker in spirit than the three original Heathers. At Westerberg High School, Heather Chandler enlists Veronica's help to play a cruel prank on an unpopular classmate, Martha Dunstock, played by Carrie Lynn. Veronica forges a hot and horny love letter to Martha, ostensibly from Stark quarterback Kurt Kelly, and Heather McNamara slips it onto Martha's lunch tray. Martha reads the note and asks Kurt about it, whereupon Kurt and his perpetual wingman Ram erupt into laughter, and Martha is humiliated. Kurt Kelly is played by Lance Fenton, and Ram is played by another Little House on the Prairie star, Patrick Labrador, who'd go on to star in the long-running CBS crime procedural Jag. While the other Heathers laugh at Martha, Veronica looks ashamed of her pivotal role in Martha's humiliation. That's nice, Veronica. Next time, don't write the damn letter. Veronica chats with her unpopular former best friend Betty, who is played by Renee Estevez, daughter of Martin Sheen and sister to Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez. We learned that Veronica has recently abandoned Betty to join the Heathers. In the girls' bathroom, Veronica lends a finger to help Heather Duke, who is bulimic, vomit up her school lunch. Back in the cafeteria, Veronica strikes up a flirtation with a sexy and mysterious new student named JD, who wears a black trench coat and is played by Christian Slater, then known for films like The Legend of Billie Jean and Gleaming the Cube. Kurt and Ram harass JD by hurling a bunch of homophobic slurs at him, and JD whips out a gun and shoots them. After school, the Heathers and Veronica discuss the incident over croquet. JD's gun was loaded with blanks, and because this film was made pre-Columbine, when school shootings hadn't really broken into the mainstream consciousness, everyone regards his actions as a harmless prank. Heather Chandler and Veronica get ready for a party at nearby Remington University. Heather sends Veronica into a convenience store to pick her up some barbecue corn nuts, and Veronica runs into JD, who has recently moved to Sherwood with his father. Veronica and JD flirt outrageously. Veronica is miserable at the Remington party. Heather Chandler has partnered her up with a boneheaded jerk who tries to pressure her into sex. Meanwhile, Heather Chandler is coerced into performing oral sex on a gross college guy. She later spits water at the bathroom mirror in anger. Heather Chandler is an awful human being with no redeeming qualities, but this film surrounds her with other similarly awful human beings. And this moment shows that even as she mistreats people who are lower in the social pecking order, she's mistreated by people who are higher in the pecking order, such as gross college guys. Heather and Veronica get into a drunken fight, which kicks off with Veronica vomiting on Heather's shoes. Heather vows to ruin Veronica socially at their school. Back home, Veronica scribbles furiously in her diary about how she dreams of a world without Heather Chandler. She's startled by JD, who climbs in through her bedroom window. They play strip croquet and boink on the lawn, then come up with a plan to get even with Heather Chandler by giving her an emetic disguised as a hangover remedy. They sneak into Heather's home, where Veronica whips up a mixture of orange juice and milk to make Heather puke. JD thinks this is wimpy and suggests they use drain cleaner. Veronica assumes he's joking, but she accidentally grabs his mug of drain cleaner instead of the orange juice, 
and JD doesn't stop her. They goad Heather into drinking it, and Heather promptly chokes and crashes through her glass coffee table, dead. So many teen bedrooms in the 80s had that exact Patrick Nagel print on the wall. In a panic, Veronica and JD decide to make Heather's death look like a suicide. Veronica forges a suicide note in Heather's handwriting, which explains that no one understood the real Heather. Back at school, Veronica is dismayed to realize that Heather Chandler's death has bestowed depth and meaning upon a notoriously shallow and spiteful individual. Flaky teacher Pauline Fleming, played by Penelope Milford, Oscar nominee for the 1978 wartime drama Coming Home, passes around Heather's fake suicide note in her class classroom as an example of the depth of feeling teenagers are capable of experiencing. Veronica and JD hang out at JD's home and watch the fawning local news coverage, which glamorizes Heather's suicide and lionizes her after her death. Veronica meets JD's dad, who is played by Kirk Scott, and who is clearly mentally unwell. A demolitions expert, JD's dad takes sadistic pleasure in blowing things up. It's strongly suggested that JD's mom killed herself by remaining behind in a building that JD's dad destroyed. At Heather's funeral, the priest, Father Ripper, gives an over-the-top sermon where he blames Heather's death on youth culture and the MTV video games. Father Ripper is played by the late Glenn Shaddix, best known for Beetlejuice. After the funeral, Heather McNamara refreshes her makeup in the holy water and convinces Veronica to join her on a double date with Kurt and Ram, who are currently tormenting an unpopular student. The date is awful. Kurt and Ram get drunk and tip cows in a pasture, and Ram flat out rapes Heather McNamara while Kurt drunkenly tries to seduce Veronica. JD arrives, and Veronica leaves with him, after making no attempt to help her friend, who is literally getting violently raped a few steps away from her. At school, while the newspaper staff assembles a treacly photo tribute to Heather Chandler, Veronica finds out from overachieving smart kid Peter Peter, played by Jeremy Applegate, that Kurt and Ram are spreading a rumor that she orally serviced them both at the same time. Egged on by JD, Veronica arranges to meet Kurt and Ram for sexual shenanigans. JD has concocted a plan in which they'll shoot Kurt and Ram with harmless tranquilizer bullets, and then arrange the scene to make it look like they were having a gay tryst so when they regain consciousness they'll be the laughingstock of the school. Veronica meets Kurt and Ram in the woods, she and JD whip out their guns, and of course JD has lied to her and their guns are loaded with real bullets. JD murders Ram, but Veronica's bullet misses Kurt. Kurt runs for it, with JD in hot pursuit, and Veronica eventually ends up shooting and killing Kurt. They stage the scene to make it look like a double suicide. JD and Veronica attend Kurt and Ram's ridiculous double funeral, where they crack jokes and giggle. At the sight of a crying young girl, obviously a younger sister to Kurt or Ram, it finally dawns on Veronica that she did something pretty monstrous. Even as Veronica's conscience starts to bother her, JD is overjoyed at the way he and Veronica have disrupted the school's social norms. The bouncy pop hit Teenage Suicide Don't Do It by Big Fun, a fictional group made up just for Heathers, becomes a big hit on the local radio thanks to all the recent high-profile deaths. Fed up, Veronica finally breaks up with her psychotic boyfriend. JD blackmails Heather Duke with photos of her childhood friendship with Martha Dunstock into doing him an unspecified favor in the future. He gives her Heather Chandler's signature red scrunchie, which signifies that Heather Duke will be taking her place as the ringleader of the Heathers. Meanwhile, Martha Dunstock decides to follow the example set by the popular kids by trying to kill herself. She steps out into traffic with a suicide note pinned to her big fun t-shirt and is hit by a car. She's badly injured but survives. Later, Veronica Veronica and Heather Duke listen in as Heather McNamara calls into Hot Probs, their favorite nighttime radio show. Using an alias, Heather McNamara tells the DJ about how alone and miserable she's been feeling lately. Heather Duke decides to use this information to socially destroy Heather McNamara. Now the laughing stock of the school, Heather McNamara tries to overdose on pills in the girls' room, but Veronica stops her. JD asks Heather Duke to get every single student in the school to sign a petition asking Big Fun to play at their prom. Heather Duke sets about doing just that. That. Veronica has a surreal dream in which she and JD murder Heather Duke and then attend her funeral where she runs into the vengeful spirit of Heather Chandler. JD climbs in through Veronica's bedroom window intending to murder her and make it look like she killed herself. He discovers that she's hung herself with her bedsheets. JD confesses to Veronica's corpse that the petition everyone signed is actually a death pact. He's going to blow up the school and make it look like a mass suicide because JD believes that the only place where teenagers of different social classes can genuinely get along is in heaven. After he leaves, Veronica reveals that she faked her death to fool JD. 
At school the next day, while the entire student body attends a pep rally, a gun-toting Veronica tracks JD to the boiler room where he's planting explosives. They fight, and Veronica shoots him and inadvertently manages to stop the countdown timer on his bombs. A mortally wounded JD has rigged himself with dynamite, and he blows himself to pieces while Veronica calmly lights her cigarette off of the explosion. Everyone evacuates. In the chaos, Veronica steals Heather Duke's red scrunchie of power and then asks Martha Dunstock if she wants to hang out with her on prom night. Martha agrees, and and credits roll over Sly and the Family Stone's cover of Que Sera, Sera Heathers directly and viciously satirizes the teen films that so many of us Gen Xers adored throughout the 80s. A beautiful and popular rich girl falls in love with a dangerous bad boy who doesn't get along with her superficial friends. This is the premise of 1983's Valley Girl, only in this case the bad boy turns out to be psychotic and he encourages the rich girl to give in to her darkest and most lethal impulses. If Heathers were the breakfast club after rich girl Claire had hooked up with bad boy Bender in detention, they would have shot popular jock Andrew in the face before blowing up Shermer High. Heathers is an exceptionally mean-spirited film. And that's not exactly a criticism. If you went up to the filmmakers and told them that Heathers is mean-spirited, they'd probably say, yeah, it is. What are you going to do about it, jerk face? One of the most bracing aspects of Heathers is the way it throws industrial strength drain cleaner into the face of viewers who come into it expecting a sentimental teen romp. Heathers is wildly uncharitable towards most of its characters, both the ones who are obviously utterly terrible human beings like Heather Chandler and Curtin Ram, but also the ones who don't seem to have done much to warrant such clear contempt. Let's look specifically at flaky teacher Pauline Fleming and high-achieving do-gooder Peter. The film hates these two characters, who for the most part seem mostly harmless. Ms. Fleming repeatedly tries to get the students to come together and heal after the rash of suicides, which is a nice gesture, though it's clear she's reveling in the ensuing media blitz. Peter spends his lunch break collecting donations to feed the hungry, though his altruism is motivated at least in part by a desire to pad out his college application. They're both flawed and maybe a little despicable, but at least Ms. Fleming and Peter don't publicly humiliate an overweight classmate, walk away while a friend is being brutally raped, and act as an accomplice in multiple homicides. Veronica, for all the contempt Heathers feels towards its characters, it's surprisingly generous towards JD and especially Veronica. The ending, where Veronica spontaneously befriends Martha Dunstock, sticks in my craw a little bit, because we've seen Veronica be outrageously cruel to Martha. There's kind of a gross implication that because Veronica is beautiful and clever and fun to be around, the gift of her friendship is enough to make up for her earlier treatment of Martha, which, let's be clear, was a huge factor in Martha's decision to try to kill herself. Heathers was a tough film to get made, and compromises had to be negotiated with a production company, which is probably why Veronica ends up getting too much of a free pass for her awful behavior. In an early draft of Daniel Waters' excellent screenplay, Martha stabs Veronica in the gut at the end, which in many ways is a lot more satisfying than Veronica spontaneously deciding she and Martha should be BFFs. Speaking of script changes, the original screenplay of Heathers ended with the school being blown up and everyone reuniting at prom in heaven. That ending was a deal breaker for producers. But even with some edges softened, Heathers is a dark and merciless film. It's become commonplace for critics to point out that with its flippant attitude toward teen suicides and school violence, and with its lampooning of what it views as performative grief in the wake of tragedy, Heathers couldn't be made today. And that's undoubtedly true, but Daniel Waters and Michael Lehman have both pointed out that Heathers could barely be made in 1989. As tricky as it was to get made, and as badly as it flopped in theaters, Heathers has become surprisingly influential. A musical based on Heathers premiered off-Broadway in 2014. There was also a short-lived 2018 Heathers TV series made for the Paramount Network, which was dogged with controversy throughout its short life. I didn't watch it and can't judge, but I imagine it would be very difficult to live up to the standard set by the original film. Daniel Waters' script featured clever, vicious dialogue that included a whole bunch of wholly made-up teen jargon that made the film endlessly quotable. How very, what is your damage, swatch dogs and diet coke heads. The fashions in Heathers, the tailored jackets with enormous padded shoulders paired with tights and short pleated skirts, all helped to give Heathers a very distinctive visual look. If you wanted to dress up as a Heather for Halloween, that would be an easy and iconic costume, and all the Gen Xers would instantly get it. As Heather Chandler might say, it'd be very. Next time we're going to wallow in David Lynch weirdness with Blue Velvet. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you then. Music